is a huge, huge Wednesday night. It's the fifth Wednesday of a month. And when it's fifth Wednesday, it's Mr. Brown night. Yay. So Yay. 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 There he is. We'll be bringing, introducing him um, a little bit later. I don't see anybody new. So you pretty much know the, my opening statement, but the first thing I'm gonna say is hello, church family. Welcome to Wednesday night service at the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. It's our midweek service. It's our little pick me up in between Sundays. Um, so welcome. Reverend Jeff likes us to do an informal, intimate and rich experience through this medium. And he likes to use the satsang style. And a lot of our speakers do use that. Um, some do classroom or a lecture, some form a circle digitally. Um, some are interactive and contemplative. But most of the time we invite a speaker to speak and then we have a conversation, a very rich, intimate and informal conversation. Uh, we kind of got a mix of that with Mr. Brown tonight. He's gonna mix a little classroom and a little bit of circle, a little bit of satsang. He's gonna mix it all up, all those ingredients and we're gonna call it Fifth Wednesday. It is the last Wednesday of 2020 and it's the last formal um, service um, sponsored by Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, which I have been very grateful to lead most of this year. Um, I have a couple of parting statements to send us off into 2021, which I'll say for the end, um, a little review of how effective our Wednesday nights have been for me and what I've experienced. And I'm grateful that you're all here. So I welcome you. It is the last formal um, event because it's the last time we'll mention our annual theme, which is 2020 spiritual vision. And this is the last um, formal event um, doing celebrating divine truth is our monthly theme for December. Um, so um, I'm looking forward to tonight. Um, before I go into introducing um, Christopher, I'm going to ask that uh, Susan Urquhart Brown, lead us in an opening prayer. Susan, can you do that for us? Yes. Thank you. Ah, so let's just take a breath, going into that space and that place of oneness, in that beauteousness of the universe that mm -hmm. is ever present in every precious moment, bringing us right into this present precious moment right here and right now bringing us together with the joy of being together with our community, with our connection, with our love and our kindness and our compassion. And I simply bless this service knowing that Mr. Brown, as our speaker is sharing his light, sharing his wisdom, sharing his uh, joy in in uh, life and his humor and bringing us into the fray so that we can uh, interact in a most wonderful way. So I am so grateful for the service today for our community and for this opportunity to be together in this very last event at OCSL issue uh, in 2020 ushering 2020 out and bringing 2021 in. So it's with great thanks and blessing. And let's say together, and so it is. Amen. So it is. Thank you, Susan. We appreciate you very much for your service to us tonight. You look great in that color, Susan. That's a great color on you. I've not seen that before, so. As your personal stylist, I approve. Thumbs up, babe. That looks great. <laughs> With that in mind, another thumbs up is her husband, Christopher Brown. He's a practitioner here at the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. He's also got a resume as long as my arms that disappear when I spread them out. So let me give you a little bit of background on Mr. Brown. He's a regular and routine speaker at the Home of Truth in Alameda and Unity in Brentwood. Um, he's also co-leader with Susan 
of the International Power Presence Workshops and Retreats. He's also my co-leader of the facilities team, and he's the professor of the physical universe. What a title, huh? With Susan Urquhart Brown, they lead a monthly Saturday Circle group that has been meeting, I believe, consistently for over 10 years, because I counted 10 years the other day that I've been coming to your Saturday Circle, Christopher and Susan. So I think it's a decade of distinction that you, service you've been providing. So I want to let you all know about how wonderful and lucky we are to have him tonight. Christopher's talk is Uncherished Gifts but vanish. Why did I almost say varnish, Christopher? <laughs> it's that, that physical, it's that physical um, professorship I'm trying to get. Uncherished gifts vanish. Christopher Brown knows that we are all independent researchers trying to figure out the mysteries of life. His research has taught him to reject any wisdom that does not know how to cry, any philosophy which does not know laughter and any greatness which is not humbled by the joy of children. So the best we can do is to hold each other's hands as we walk through the mysteries of life together. So at this point, I turn the program over to you, Mr. Brown. Mm. It's all for you. Thank, Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I should add one other thing is that we appreciate one another and that we don't take each other for granted. And that's really the, the whole basis of this talk. And it goes into uncherished gifts vanish. And I got that as a um, uh, fortune cookie about 50 years ago. And it's been with, that, with me ever since. I mean, I hold it very, very dearly. If we don't cherish something, we tend to take it for granted and it disappears off our radar. I've been having trouble with my teeth. I've been having a, um, you know, like a real pain in the jaw. And it's like, you don't realize that teeth are a blessing when they don't hurt. It's like something that simple. And our loved ones that we take for granted, not that we take them for granted, but we forget to appreciate them. We forget to cherish them. And so there was this woman and she got a phone call and sure enough, her daughter, this is from the babysitter, her daughter had gotten, had taken a fever and the babysitter was saying, bring home some Tylenol, you're out. So the, um, the mother rushes to the pharmacy, ends up getting, gets the medicine, but locks her keys in the, the door and now she's panicked. So she calls up the babysitter and the babysitter said, well, I, I don't know what to do, but I've seen, you know, you could use a coat hanger. Maybe you can pry in and, and open it up that way. And so she thinks, well, I'm going to do some prayer work here. <laughs> so she says, God, send me something. I'm in, I'm in deep doo-doo right now. So two minutes later, this biker comes charging up big, huge Harley, huge beard, tattoos, big old skull and bones, um, headband. This guy's scary. And the mother thinks, wow, you sent me this? I don't know, this is pretty scary. And the biker comes up to her and says, what's the problem? Do you need any help? And she said, well, yes, my daughter's sick and, and I need to get in the car. Oh, no problem. And within minutes, the car is open. Well, the, the mother is delighted and she goes up and she thanks him and she says, you're such a good man. And he says, no, I don't think so. I just got out of prison for car theft. And she said, oh God, thank you even more. You sent me a professional. And so Here we have appreciation. Here's our little, the little, the little spin on this story here. Number one, she appreciated what was given. It didn't look like her picture of what help was about, but she appreciated it. She took it in. She said, okay, this isn't, you know, it's not what I think, but I'm taking it in. And then when it was over, 
she went out of her way to really appreciate the man and his kindness. And as we can see, when we appreciate something, the kindness sort of goes in a circle. He felt appreciated, which in turn sort of flows back to her. Everyone feels good in a, in a circle of appreciation when we actually get down and appreciate one another. And so when we appreciate what we have, what is given this moment, this life, this year, if we can even begin to appreciate this year, this is, this is powerful spiritual stuff, really powerful. I don't need to go into how difficult this year has been for so many hundreds of millions of people, millions of billions of people. So I'm just gonna hit some highlights. And as I mentioned some of these things, look inside, how did these incidents through this year strike you? Were you able to appreciate them? Were they a blessing or were they a curse? Not to judge either way, but just to notice what arises in you. Let's pick the first one, the beginning of the year, Trump's impeachment that was unsuccessful. Was that a blessing or a curse? You know, for me, it was a tragedy. It was a miscarriage of justice. It was criminal what he got away with. But for others, this was great. There was millions of people that thought this was horrible that he was even thought about being impeached. So we can see that perhaps it's not just the actions, it's how we're framing them how we're holding on to them. Then the coronavirus hits, blessing or a curse? Well, obviously it's a curse, but for some, this is a powerful experience, it's a powerful learning experience for, for many who discovered creativity, that discovered the joys of just telecommuting and socially distancing. Uh, the introverts had a field day. <laughs> So again, a blessing or a curse depends on our point of view. And then you have that brave captain of that aircraft carrier, Brett uh, Krosnier, who was fired for doing the right thing. Now, if you were to ask Brett five years from now, was it a blessing or a curse? We don't know what he's gonna say. Chances are, He's such a kind man, he will make a blessing out of it. He will discover that it was a blessing in disguise. And then we have the tragedy of, of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. A blessing or a curse? Well, it depends upon your level of kindness and compassion and your consciousness. For those that lack in those three areas, this was a blessing. There was two more black people off the planet. That's a tragic thing to say. A real tragedy, but depending upon your point of view, that could be a blessing. For people of kindness and compassion, it's an absolute tragedy. And then we get on to Ruth Bader Ginsburg a beacon of light and of consciousness and a, and a champion of, of not only women's rights, but human rights all the way across the board. And to be replaced with a Amy Cohen, Cohen <coughs> Connie Barrett, a blessing or a curse remains to be seen but it's certainly a tragedy the way that nomination was put through. And then if we end up with Biden winning the election, a blessing or a curse? For some, it's absolutely a curse. He's a socialist, the country will be ruined. The other side is maybe we have a, an equal opportunity for kindness and maybe a coming together and a renewal in democracy and social justice. And lastly, we have a vaccine. And we still don't know how safe it is 
but how effective it will be. A blessing or a curse, we don't really know. Each event that comes, we view through our lens, our particular set of glasses and, and our, our way of looking at the world. So whose way of looking through the world is right? Well, obviously it's mine, but if you don't agree with me, then I am, you see, it, it kind of gets tricky. We all have our point of view and that's the beauty. And if you're going to pick a point of view, I'm suggesting that you pick a point of view that evokes kindness, that evokes equal justice for the largest amount of people, that also evokes honesty, that believes in factual collaboration. And in this way, we can communicate over a common basis of integrity. So if you're gonna take a look at any point of view, maybe we can look at it through that lens, the lens of honesty, that's basically based on a scientifically proven type of thing, that, that it's based in kindness and in cooperation. So when we speak of kindness, We know kindness by, by how it feels. See, a blind man, blind woman can see kindness. A deaf man or deaf woman can hear kindness. You don't need to, to hear it to know. You don't need to see it to know. You know it. It's a full body experience. Something within you absolutely recognizes kindness. And what is appreciation? but a form of kindness. And that kindness and love and appreciation all drive in the same car. They're inseparable companions. So Constance, get us prepared for our first breakout. And so we're gonna have a, a little exercise where you're gonna be matched up with a wonderful partner. And when you're matched up with this wonderful partner, you're going to talk to them about a time when you were really appreciated. I mean, really appreciated. And it's the kind of time where you heard it, it was so powerful that you didn't deflect and say, oh, that was nothing but you actually let it in. It was so sincere, it floored you. You could think of something recent or something old, but just notice a time when you were really appreciated. Thank you. Wow, that really made a lot, that made a big difference in my life. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. Okay, and then again, how did it make you feel and then perhaps was there a residual effect afterwards? So I'll repeat that. Recall a time when you were really appreciated. Could be recent, could be the past, could be when you were a child, could be a mentor or a teacher. Could you really hear it? Did you deflect or did you just let it in? And how did it feel? Kind of get the idea? Well, Constance, if you could break us up into groups right now, you can continue answering that and you'll have four minutes each to really take a look and to share with your partner how much, <clears throat> what did it feel like to be appreciated? Okay. It ended. I thought we were gonna have four minutes a piece. <laughs> this is I, I, shorter I, time. We yep. did, it just went by yeah. fast. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have you thanked your wonderful partner? Have you appreciated them? Yes. Yes, she did. Yeah. We spent Thanks, the whole Marie. time Thanks, doing Marie. that. <laughs> Thank you, my heart. Thanks, Margot. Thank you, Thank you, Zoe. Okay. 
Why, can't, I, why can't I get a video? Okay, I don't you? know, Margo. <clears throat> Thank so you. So how, how do you <laughs> feel at this point? You know, we just did a little exercise. Check your body and just tune in. Dolly. How, how did you, how do you, do you feel any different by expressing yes. appreciation? Yes. 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 Dolly, old Saint Nick. <laughs> Who'd like to share what they discovered in the act of just appreciating? Oh, like yay! That? There I am. Is that Margo? <laughs> Peggy? Somebody gave me my life. There I am. <laughs> <laughs> Judith, get hers. Oh, you got it. You're back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Peggy, if you unmute. I, I wanted to I wanted to mention that Sherry Kramer had a partner, but she, they could not. Well, Sherry, please speak up. Uh, was it that you um, could not hear each other? Uh, my partner couldn't see me because um, the host it said I got a notice saying the host has stopped your video, so I couldn't um, I couldn't get in so she could see me. Oh, but could you hear one another? She could hear me. I could see her and hear her. <laughs> she couldn't see me. Oh, so we were able to talk. Thank you. Okay. But now, I, but now I, I just put that in the chat and um, whoever did this PC or someone, I am now able to have the video going. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Is there anything you want to share since that was, there was that problem of seeing one another is, um, since I have you on the screen right now? No. Okay. Just want to check in. Thank you. So is there anybody else, who else would like to share? What did you learn about yourself in that, in that exercise? What was that like for you? Well, one thing I learned was that once you think about it, there's a lot that you've yeah. been appreciated for throughout your time, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, did you hear it? Are, are we able to take it in or do we just deflect it away? We're given this beautiful gift but do we actually fully receive it? That's been a um, goal of mine. I'm, I've hit a milestone birthday this year. And so I've set up Zooms with friends and I'm gonna continue this through January. And I ask them, you know, it's like, aside from just catching up, like, what is it about me that you like, right? Like, why are we friends? And so part of my goal in asking these questions, um, it's twofold. One is it's a spiritual practice for me to sit and listen to them talk about my positive qualities and just accept it and accept more love into my life in that way. Um, and the other is I've just done so much work on myself the past couple of years and so many things have changed. It's like, there are pieces of how I see myself that are very outdated and I'm trying to bring mm. those up to date. So it's, this is something that I've been focused on for the last month and it's frankly, really fabulous. <laughs> I'm really Good. liking it a lot. Good. Well, before we move on, who else would like to share? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Bob. Uh, no, I would. Uh, I I think I found it kind of hard to find something. Oh. I to, I, <laughs> so um, I had to dig a little bit, mm -hmm. and but that was that was that was okay. I, I found I, I started finding a few things, and um, I really appreciated that um, my partner um, Alice went first, so that helped me to. <laughs> <laughs> dig, dig into my into my uh, memories. So I'll tell you, it, it it's almost like we have to be put in the mood um, because it's it's yeah. that inward look, and it goes to a very tender, sensitive place. And for the most part, we walk around life, you know, sort of armored up in our protection. And when we appreciate something, we become vulnerable. It's, it's kind of a scary place to be, to be that open and available. Vulnerable. But it's, it's like, um, I have a gate 
in front of my house and it squeaks and every year or so I put a drop of oil on the two hinges and it stops squeaking. And the hinges would be fine squeaking, they would be just fine, but it's kind of like annoying. And the gate gets cranky. And I think what happens is when we're not appreciated, we get annoying and cranky. <laughs> and it only takes but a little bit of appreciation to kind of get us all fluffy and happy again. It doesn't take much. A simple thank you, a nod on the street, so simple. And it's like we open, we start to bloom. And it's like, well, if it works like this and it's so good for us, why don't we do more of it? And that's, that's a very interesting question. So we're gonna get ready for another exercise. And we're gonna have uh, an A and a B. And this time you guys are gonna be appreciating something. Mm -hmm. So the A's are gonna be going first. And what the A's are gonna be doing is they're gonna be finding somebody in their lives, somebody in your life, either living or dead, and if you have time, you could do two people. But if you don't, make it just one, you know, make it one person. And you're going to appreciate them. You're going to get wild in your appreciation. You're going to pull out the stops. You're just going to go wacko bananas, as my granddaughter would say. And really appreciate them. And just just to let it all, just to just basically you're going to tell them how much you care about them and what it's meant for them to be in your life. You kind of get the idea? You can nod and I can see that. Yeah, you can, <laughs> okay, you got it very good. <laughs> so, so Christopher, yeah. the A and the B switch? Yeah, so you're gonna appreciate, you might try appreciating one of them and the B, oh, yeah, the B's job is to listen really listen and take it in like you're the other person so that you're just absorbing this. You're the witness. So the appreciation, the, the words that you're speaking will be containing your love for that person. So the other person actually feels your love through that capsule of communication. So so Chris, this, is not, this is not necessarily our partner, but we think of somebody in our partner is listening, right? Yes. Okay. Um, this okay. is the partner is pretending to be that person. Okay. okay. So if that was your best friend, or it could be a dead relative, it could be who knows. Okay. So how much? Let's go for it. Thank your wonderful partners. If you haven't already, yay! Thanks. To thank you, Ryan. How are you, Deborah? Yeah, thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, thank you Maureen. You're still so meeting. Thank you, so. Thanks, Deborah. That was great. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. So wonderful. Great, Maureen. So what did it feel like to, first you were getting a sense of being appreciated. Now you were appreciating somebody. Was it a different feeling or was it the same sort of feeling? Who'd like to speak to that? Mm. Yeah. Sure. It was the same kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. definitely was. Yeah, Peter was my partner and uh, it was just um, flowing. My listening to his heart, mine open. And when he listened to me, his open. I mean, I can't, not gonna speak for you, but that's what I- Right, well, that's, say. yes, absolutely. That, well, yeah. yeah, I felt the same way. Yeah, 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 it was really, really heart connecting. So, wonderful yeah. experience. Thanks, for Yeah, supper. yes. So you're getting the- <laughs> You're getting the idea is that it's a fee you can feel it. I mean, and when we allow ourselves to feel it, this is the nurturing aspect of appreciation. This is the healing quality of appreciation. It's probably the most powerful spiritual practice we can do because it opens us up, cracks us wide open in terms of our vulnerability. And when our heart breaks open like that, that's when the light shines in and out. So I can't speak highly enough about really hmm, not stopping yourself. 
when I look at the regrets in my life, the regrets are when I miss those opportunities to tell somebody how much I cared, really how much I cared. And you have people in your life that you haven't told them, at least recently, how much you care about them. And those words are so powerful when they come from that tender place that they will lubricate any hinge that your friend has. <laughs> You'll take the squeaks right out of them. Okay, Is, who else would like to share before we move on? I'll say something, Christopher. Sure, yeah. I just really wanna, you know, say that it's a, it's wonderful to, to have to do this exercise because it's a reminder of that the feeling that you had, whether it was when you were 10 years old or whether it just happened 10 minutes ago, never leaves you. The minute it never mm -hmm. leaves it, when you begin to think about it again, it's there it is. Yeah. What, a, what, what a blessing to have to have that to come back alive again, because it never, it's never not alive. It's just that we're not, we're forgetting it. We're focusing elsewhere. Yes. See, this is when you don't cherish the gift, it vanishes. But something like this, it, we remind ourselves, and that's the whole purpose of this, is how do we remind ourselves to simply be present to the, all the opportunities we have daily to appreciate and to be kind. We're gonna have one last quick exercise. We're gonna have, this will be six minutes, <clears throat> two partners again. And this time, what you're gonna do is whoever you show up with in the room, and I don't, see if you can hold on, you know, if you can really be present to this, especially if you don't know the person. Whoever you get in that room will be perfect for you. And your job is to simply be with them and to appreciate them just as they are, just for who they are, even if you don't know them, but to actually be with them. And this is, this is our practice. How do we be with some, one another and to simply appreciate this particular expression of the beloved? Because here we are, the divine is in front of you. Can you appreciate the divine in front of you? And what would you say? You got the idea? Whew, take a breath. <laughs> Are you ready? Go appreciate your one.
<laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Peggy. <laughs> Clearly not enough time. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thanks, Christopher. Oh, thank, thank you, you, Freya. Thank you, all thanks, your Ryder. wonderful partners. Yeah, thanks, uh, Peter. Uh, thank you, Alice. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, baby. <laughs> so just wrapping this all up. First off, how did you feel being appreciated? That was kind of the end piece. What did that feel like? We could just take one or two people. What was that like for you? For me, my match was perfect. It was divinely guided. <laughs> I mean, if I could have picked anybody on this list, it was her. And I got with Peggy. And we rec oh, rec recognized, I recognized earlier in the evening how important she has been all year long with and before with me. And I never got a chance to chat with her about it. <laughs> So I had recognized that earlier in the evening because I want to close tonight with kind of a wrap up of Wednesday nights for the year. And so I hope you all stick with me for that because you're all involved in that. Um, but um, Peggy came up in my mind in, in crafting what I want to say and to get stuck for her to get stuck with me in that last exercise <laughs> was quite divinely guided. So thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Paul. Is there anybody else before we move on? I met someone I didn't know. This is Peter. And Hi, Peter. I, met, I, I met Reinhardt and I was very glad to meet someone that I, that I didn't know very well. And I was humbled that he knew who I was just from my presence here. And yes. that, was, that was wonderful that we could meet and talk together. Thank you, Reinhardt. <clears throat> I had an exciting thing happen. I knew who I was going to get. And I waited and waited and was calling her, knowing her that she was coming. And there she was, Deborah. She, and I went, I know, I know. I was saying, hurry up, Deborah, hurry up, Deborah. So I don't know how that happened. But we got a good, a good little smile out of that. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Thank you. So, <clears throat> A 30 second wrap up for this evening. Think about, think about how good it feels, the, the yumminess of appreciation. Is it possible to make this a practice in your own life? What could you do to sort of keep this fresh on your, fresh on your mind so you don't go back to sleep about how important this is? Number one. Number two. Learn even better how to receive compliments so there's no deflection, so that you just can soak it in and say, wow, thank you. That's, that's, that's meaningful. That, that, I appreciate that. And then shut up. <laughs> Don't <laughs> say anything more. <laughs> and if you get that and uncherished gifts vanish, you keep that fresh before you. Yeah. You will have made my evening. <laughs> and I want to thank you so much for playing with me tonight. Oh, thank you, Christopher. You. Thank, thank you, Christopher. You. That was fabulous. Yay. Yay. That is a happy, happy New Year, Year gift. Thank you, yeah. all my partners. Thank you, Christopher. Wow. As, Beautiful. I, as I said earlier tonight, this is the last official Oakland Center for Spiritual Living event of the year. And what a year it's been. So I have a whole long list of announcements. So I'm going to go through those rather quickly. But I'm hoping you'll stay for my Wednesday wrap up because all of you are part of my Wednesday wrap up. And I think it's important and it ties completely into what Christopher's talk talked about, but more on a local level. So just hang tight with me, if you will. Um, again, thank you, Christopher and Susan for your meditation and prayer tonight. Um, Christopher will close us in prayer as soon as I get done with my spiel here. Um, on the first Sunday of 2021, get ready you all, here comes the big announcement. Reverend Sally is starting the new year with our new annual theme. You ready to hear what it is? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Timeless wisdom, evolutionary wisdom. 
Awesome. Wow. Timeless wisdom slash evolutionary wisdom. That's our annual theme for 2021. I don't know what they do in mile high. They must be getting high all the time because <laughs> they pick every year, they pick a theme that is so appropriate for all of us in our village. So that's our theme going into 2021 and she'll be speaking on that. It's, and it's also our January theme and that's our first Sunday, next Sunday, January 3rd, Reverend Sally. Meditation is at 10 and the service starts at 1030. And next Wednesday will be our first Wednesday of the new year, um, a Satsang Wednesday. And it will be Reverend Sally speaking on the same subject. So if you missed it on Sunday, you're going to get it on Wednesday and, and, and repeat and rerun and leftovers. And I, I, any crumb that Sally throws our way is just a feast. So I'm looking forward to next Wednesday night. Meditation is at 630 and the service is at 7. The holiday season is still upon us and what a season it has been. So when you go to bed tonight, and I've done it already, set your alarm for 3.30, 3.45. And if you're really fast and don't need coffee, 3.55. <laughs> and join with people the world over for the 4 a.m. peace meditation. Because somewhere in the world, it's New Year's Day. Right. So this year, it's being hosted by our Centers for Spiritual Living. Normally, we hold this in our social hall. Karen Peterson usually heads us up, and a lot of folks come together, and we have breakfast. But because of the way things are, we're going to join in with a larger worldwide group digitally. Now, how do you do that? So I'm going to ask Constance to show us um, our website, because there's a little known thing we found out through conversation that when you go to our website or if you get the village news, everything you almost always need to know is on the home page. But if you look at the top blue line that she's going to show us, there's an events button. You do that drop down and go to events and any special events like Deborah's place to register, um, like the uh, telling us about the comm group and clicking into the Zoom there. Um, there is the click for World Peace Meditation. It's been there for a month. We've been advertising it. So if you're going to do this in the morning, basically go to the second page of the website, which is the events page. And there you'll see all the things that we talk about that are not on the home page. Does that make sense, y'all? A little education, mm -hmm. a little, okay. Um, how, can't put it, yes, ma'am. How long does it take? How long, how long does the meditation last? It's one hour. Okay. The way we did is we broke it up into four parts. But I don't know how they're going to do it. But you'll be meeting with people from all over the world. Um, so go to, go to the events page, click on that, and it'll lead you just like a normal Zoom call right to, to that. Um, again, that's at 4 a.m. In, in, what, four, eight hours from now, which is <laughs> New Year's Eve day, okay? So thank you, Constance. Um, it snuck up, but technically that's a that's a csl event so this is our the last ocsl event but we're joining we're combining our normal <laughs> event with theirs um Paul, then, i have a question about that sure go on. will we be seeing the faces of the people from i'm the i'm assuming it's in zoom i'm assuming we're gonna see oh that'd be wonderful yeah I, I don't i don't know too much about it i just i'm, I'm i'll be there after okay. a cup of coffee and I'll be in my bathrobe. <laughs> you, you may just see my name. Because, <laughs> you know, I'll have one hair sticking up that will not behave at that hour. So with that in mind, let me keep moving on. The final holiday event that the, the church is sponsoring actually happens in the new year. And that's just 10 days away. And it's the virtual vision board party. 
in order to get your packet of material, you must register by this Friday, January 1st. So do it now. And you, as you saw, it was on the events page to go there to um, register. This virtual event will start on Saturday, January 9th. Deborah Jackson, assisted by Reverend Sally and practitioner Bathsheba from East Bay, uh, Bathsheba Harambi from East Bay, will lead you into what you want to manifest for 2021. And they'll talk about the logistics of doing the vision board from your own home. Vision board kits will be available after you register. And because this is virtual, make it a family affair. Then you'll reconvene on Saturday, January 30th to gather and show and share your visual vision for 2021 that you constructed. This is a fun and fundraiser for Oakland Center. It's the largest fundraiser that we have of the year, um, generally speaking in recent histories. Um, so Deborah does a wonderful job with this. Um, no one will be turned away. The suggested love offering is $50. She would like to say $50 or more, and I say $50 and a lot more. You are encouraged to bring a friend. So I'm going to ask Deborah, can you come on and give me about a minute of your time to, to encourage folks to join you and what you have planned? Thank you, Paul. You have already um, explained it quite well. The one thing I do want to say, though, is that one of the things is that we have had a year that in this pandemic that has created an opportunity for us in terms of vision boarding. And that is, what is the world that we would like to see going forward? How is it? And I am asking people to come invite yourselves and and bring your friends to really make it real with our um what do they say a, a world that works for everyone and i am asking us to not only include that in our vision board but absolutely take that and think about it in terms of making it present that doesn't mean I want you to exclude anything that you want for the following year, but what I would like us as a community to come together and do is A, support our community, but also create a vision that works for everyone so that we can place it in our minds. We are the creators of our world, and I want it to be intentional. I want it to be a focus going into our next year. And so that's why I'm inviting everyone and, and to register as well as begin to think about how does that look? What does that picture for you? And show up on the 9th and let's have a lot, a, a lot of fun and play. I am, like they said, I've already put together kits and all of this is for not only creating a world for our community, but also creating a world for our wider community. Thank you. Perfect, Deborah. So Deborah is working on putting those kits together. Those kits contain all the materials you'll need. Plus we'll have a bunch of magazines on this. If you're registered, you'll get an email with all of this information. And on Saturday, you'll come by the center to pick up your kit and look at magazines so you can cut out pictures and stuff like that. And Deborah has a way of doing it socially distanced and safe. So um, we'll see yeah. you at, at, at what's it, one o'clock on Saturday for those that are registered. If you're not registered, or if you are and you think you can tell a friend, a great opportunity for some out picturing and out community activity. Um, Deborah, I know this is gonna be beyond successful. So thank you, darling. This Sunday at 1230 is also the Compassion and Attention to Lost Ministry Group is meeting. The January theme is Rumble of Change, It's Challenge and Gifts. Uh, the Zoom information now you know is on the events page. It's also in the Village News. Um, did you know that the Centers for Spiritual Living, our home office sponsors wonderful events? Coming up in February is the Vista Conference. It's three days of virtually packed information with wonderful speakers and musicians. This is 
this what you're seeing now is the Centers for Spiritual Living, our home office's website. Their early bird registration ends tomorrow, Thursday, December 31st. You can still register after that. You just don't get the early bird special. If you're interested in going at a group discount price, check out the conference at csl.org. That's what you're looking at right now. Then if you want to register by tomorrow, contact Reverend Jerry at Reverend Jerry at oaklandcsl.org. That's her email address. It's also on the web, our website under the ministers. While you're on their website, sign up for the, their CSL newsletter so you'll get direct access to all of their events. See the red arrow at the top? It says email sign up. Just click on that and it'll prompt you to enter your email and you can get the home office's version of the Village News. Also, remember to sign up for the Sacred Circle series for Black, Indigenous, and people of color. The series starts the first week of January. This series is being offered by our home office and offers an opportunity to explore the impact of racialized trauma. Sign up information is in our weekly newsletter, The Village News. If you're a voting member of the Oakland Center and would like to serve your village, consider applying to be on the Board of Trustees. For more information, contact Deborah Jackson, who's on the call tonight, and offers, um, I'm sorry, I skipped a line. Go back. For more information, contact Deborah, and you can download an application from the homepage of the website. The application details a lot of what you may be wondering about for, for serving on the Board of Trustees. Also, guess what? Don't got enough time to go into it now, but in the very near future, we're going to be starting classes. That's right. It's coming taking that amazing class, whatever it is, it's coming. Just want to tease you a little bit. So with all that in mind, our website at Oakland CSL is where everything is. You can also check out our village Facebook group um, there, as well as our YouTube channel, where you can see recorded Sunday services, special messages, Wednesday nights, and um, all kinds of great stuff, our own YouTube channel. If you're not currently subscribing to the Village News for the Oakland Center, you can go to the home page. where else? Bottom left-hand corner, submit your email address and Constance will put you on the list. I want to take a minute and thank our Zoom team. Constance, Peter, Alice um, Knudsen, and Alice Herndon. Of course, the fabulous Peggy and introducing dun, 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 Barbara Vivino. She made it. She got through it. God bless her. So with that in mind, I just want to say a couple of things about Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights would not be great if it wasn't for you. And I think they're all great. Every speaker is talented. We've had wonderful things come across the board um, here on Wednesday night, but not in the same fashion that we started in January. In January, I was setting up the hall, meeting with Constance at five mm -hmm. o'clock, getting all the little paper announcements, um, turning on the heat, making hot water, setting up the chairs. It was a three-man operation. We're actually 2.5 because it was me and Constance and Reverend Jeff would give us some pointers every once in a while of what he wanted, like who's speaking when and that kind of thing. That was the big Zoom team in the physical world on Wednesday night, but not anymore. So I got called to family business. I think it was the beginning of March. I asked my beloved Zoe, please turn on your camera because I want to see your gorgeous face. And, and Elena and I said, guys, I got to go back to Ohio for the fifth time in, a, in 18 months. My aunt's failing. My sister needs help with her. I've got to go wrap up some stuff. I got to be gone for a month. Would you be willing to take over for me? And so trepidatiously and Helena said, oh, there he goes again. All right, we'll do your Wednesday nights. Little did I know I was going to leave him a pandemic and shut down the center the first Wednesday night, right? Or the second Wednesday night in March. So Zoe and Elena, um, Elena and Constance and Reverend Sally, they pulled it together and they made not only the church digital 
so we could still meet. But they crafted Wednesday night. So by the time I got home, even Zoe trained Reverend E how to use Zoom. She loves him more than she loves me. And that's a lot of love. So look at him laugh. So I owe you big time. You bailed, not only allowed me to go be with my aunt for the last time, but also um, gave me the opportunity, you and Elena, so that I know I could leave if I had to. And uh, so by the time I got back, it was April 1st, happy April Fools, after a lot of traveling through states that were masking and closing. And I come to the center and Jeff says, oh, well, since the center is going to be closed, what can we do to keep Javier busy? Well, that led into a conversation with Peggy and, and, and a whole bunch of other people, about 30 of them, Trisha. And we went and we did things that were physically impossible to do if we were open. Let me restate that. We did things in six months that we've been waiting. Christopher, you can nod your head. 10 years to do. We did in six months everything on our list. We were able to, when you see them, those get those stairs done. If we were not closed, doing hardwood stairs and staining them and shellacking them is physically impossible when there's a right side and a left side and traffic every day of the week going up and down those stairs for 60 years. We had six months to get it done and we got it done and we renovated our center, did a whole bunch of work. I have, it's not just me, it's Christopher and 30 other people. Peggy was a part of it, Trisha, Ruth. I can go down the list. Dorothy Mendez, the enforcer, new nursery, new floors. You've heard this story. My point is pandemic or not, we made great strides at the center in renovating and, and restoring our center to its original historically accurate glory. We've never done this kind of work before, both technically and, and energetically. Black Lives Lives Matters became a hot topic and a good topic. And our Centers for Spiritual Living hosted things for white people like me so that I can learn about my um, opportunities that are not equally affordable. And I'm grateful that I got to learn that lesson through the Centers for Spiritual Living and the work that Dorothy did with the prayer ministry for um, all the work that we did on that special um, event that she had, um, which we would have normally not had. Um, and then of course, um, come the holidays and how do we pull off Christmas? And I ain't doing candle lighting this year. There ain't no way I'm doing candle lighting. We had the most beautiful candle lighting service ever. You know, I felt like I was in the, in the sanctuary and I didn't even appear on camera. Reverend Sally came forward, eight people it takes to run a Zoom show, eight people. So when your attendance is high on your Wednesday night, you got a minus eight because they come along for the ride. So I'm just so grateful. And when I look back at all the potential obstacles that we had as a center, we through Wednesday nights, through Sundays, we had classes, we had meetings, um, everything is still operating at full capacity. And it's all because of you guys being willing to go for the ride. I think this has been a wonderful year considering all of the obstacles that were placed in front of us. And I'm throwing that out to you. I share that with you guys. I think we've had a very successful year. Oh, you all big time. Thanks for letting me do this. I look forward to doing it some more going forward. We have a wonderful new year, wonderful theme going. Happy, happy, happy on the sense. Um, TC said that tonight when in our conversation. I think we have a lot to be joyous about and I'm carrying that into the new year. I hope you do as well. Thank you for your work. Um, at this point, if Susan's available, no, Christopher's doing the closing prayer. Oh, we got to do the offering real quick. Digital receptacle to receive your offering. Peter, can you show the offering slide? We have a new one tonight. It looks like a new year, new start. This gift I give is God in action. It does good work in the world and blesses creation. 
Amen. Thank you. There's a way you can contribute. You all know where it is. There's the old fashioned way, which is through the mail. The even older fashioned way is that donate button, which I use. It took me 10 years to use it, but I like it. It's safe and secure. And the hip way is now to text an amount to 510-327-3431. No, I like my donate button. You've got three opportunities to contribute um, if you're so willing. And we're so grateful for your contributions. Um, and with that in mind, I thank everybody again. And Constance, a big, big kiss to you because a lot of Wednesday night has always been possible because of you. So I'm very grateful to you. Um, Christopher, if you will close us in prayer, we're only 20 yes. minutes late. <laughs> so let's take a breath. <clears throat> and as we're taking this breath, I want to personally thank Paul for his devotion mm -hmm. to the center and to this community. And what a fabulous job he has of keeping um, all of the cats <laughs> In Petting the cats the right way so that they purr. <laughs> and I want to thank the Zoom team for making this all possible. And thank all of you for showing up to really make this a community. So as we take this collective breath, this very breath that unites us all, unites our hearts, unites our a shared vision of a world that works for everyone, a world of kindness and cooperation. And as we do that, as we take one more breath, we arrive in this moment, this moment of warmth, of companionship, the feeling of being appreciated. And so we bid farewell to 2020 as we release any and all confusion and misunderstanding that may have arisen this year. We simply let it go. And we breathe in appreciation for all the love and the joy that we've shared this year. And we bid it farewell also. And as we look forward to 2021, we invite a more powerful expression of our appreciation for this very life, for all of the gifts that have been given that we can cherish and re-cherish again. And we vow not to miss any opportunity to share our love mischief with the world, with our community, through kind words, gratitude, and appreciation. And so place your hands on your heart. And this, with this next breath, appreciate your very essence. Mm. Not what you do, but who you are, who you are in the world. And with the next breath, we, we inhale an appreciation for this community, which gives us a sense of belonging, a sense to play with one another and to learn from one another. And with this last breath, we open our arms and we give this love and appreciation to the world. We bless it. We let it go, and so it is. <laughs>